Here's a mystery that's puzzled scientists for centuries. Why do animal populations go through these incredible ups and downs? One year, you see a whole bunch of rabbits. The next year, you barely see any. Some years, locust swarms cover entire states. Other years, they're nowhere to be found. Welcome to Seismic. I'm Matt, and today we're solving one of ecology's greatest puzzles, ecosystem dynamics. It turns out that animal populations don't just randomly go up and down. They follow predictable patterns based on available resources, predators, diseases, and environmental changes. By the end of this video, you'll be able to look at an ecosystem and predict what might happen to its animal populations. Let's dive into this ecological detective story. So let's start with the fundamental concept, carrying capacity. Imagine you're organizing a party in your house. You could theoretically invite everyone in your school, but your house has limits, you know, space, food, and number of bathrooms. There's a maximum number of people it can comfortably hold. Ecosystems work the same way. Every environment has a carrying capacity, the maximum number of organisms it can sustainably support. This limit is set by the most scarce resource, whether it's food, water, shelter, or space. When populations are small and resources are abundant, they can grow exponentially, doubling, tripling, and exploding in size. But as they approach carrying capacity, growth slows down. Resources become scarce, competition increases, and the population levels off. But here's where it gets interesting. What happens when a population exceeds its carrying capacity? The ecosystem can't support that many individuals individuals, so the population crashes. Animals starve, get diseases, or can't reproduce successfully. This creates a pattern called overshoot and collapse. Populations shoot above carrying capacity, then crash below it, and then slowly recover. Understanding this pattern helps us predict what will happen in different ecosystems. Let me tell you about one of the most dramatic examples of population dynamics ever recorded. In 1944, the U.S. Coast Guard introduced 29 reindeer to St. Matthew Island in Alaska, a remote island with with no predators and plenty of lichen for the reindeer to eat. At first, it seemed like paradise for these reindeer. With abundant food and no predators, the population exploded. By 1957, there were 1,350 reindeer. By 1963, the population had reached an incredible 6,000 reindeer on this small island. But the reindeer had eaten almost all the lichen, their primary food source, and the island couldn't support 6,000 reindeer. So what happened next was devastating. In the winter of 1963, to 1964, it was incredibly harsh and limited food was available, and the reindeer population crashed. When scientists returned in 1966, they only found 42 reindeer alive, and most of them were females. The population had declined by over 99%. This tragic example shows what happens when a population greatly exceeds its carrying capacity. The reindeer not only crashed their own population, but they also damaged the ecosystem so badly that it took decades to recover. It's a powerful reminder that in nature, Nature, there are always limits. Now, let's explore one of the most fascinating patterns in nature, predator-prey cycles. When you have predators and prey living together, their populations don't stay constant. Instead, they dance together in predictable cycles. Here's how it works. When prey populations are high, predators have plenty to eat, so their populations begin to grow. But as predator populations grow, they eat more prey, causing prey populations to decline. With less food available, predator populations also start to decline. When predator populations are low, prey populations can recover because they're not being eaten as much. This allows prey to increase again, which eventually supports more predators. And you guessed it, the cycle continues. This pattern happens everywhere. In the ocean with killer whales and seals, in forests with owls and mice, and in the Arctic with polar bears and seals. The timing might be different. Some cycles happen over months or others over years, but the pattern is essentially the same. Now, these cycles can be disrupted by environmental changes, diseases, or even human activities. Understanding these patterns helps us predict what might happen when ecosystems are disturbed. One of the most famous examples of predator-prey cycles comes from the Canadian wilderness, lynx and the snowshoe hares. Scientists have been tracking their populations for over 200 years using fur trapping records from the Hudson Bay's company. The data reveals an amazing pattern. Both populations cycle up and down roughly every 10 years. When hare populations peak, lynx populations peak about one to two years later. When hare populations crash, lynx populations crash shortly after as well. But it's not just about predation. Snowshoe hares also compete with each other for food, willow twigs, bark, and other vegetation in the area. When hare populations get too high, they overeat their food sources, making them weaker and more vulnerable to predators and disease. Modern research has shown that these cycles are actually influenced by multiple factors, not just predation, but also food availability, weather patterns, 
patterns, and even stress hormones. When hair populations are dense, stress levels increase, affecting their reproduction and survival. These cycles also affect other species in the ecosystem. When links are scarce, small birds and rodents face less predation. When hairs are abundant, vegetation gets heavily browsed and eaten away. It shows how predator-prey dynamics really ripple throughout entire ecosystems. While carrying capacity and predator-prey relationships are major drivers of population dynamics, they're not the only factors. Disease outbreaks can cause dramatic population crashes, like white-nose syndrome decimating bat populations, or avian flu affecting bird populations worldwide. Weather and climate changes also play huge roles. Droughts can reduce food availability for herbivores, harsh winters can kill animals that aren't adapted to extreme cold, floods can destroy nesting sites and breeding grounds. Human activities have become one of the biggest factors affecting population dynamics. We've altered habitats, introduced invasive species, caused pollution, and changed climate patterns. But we've also implemented conservation programs that have helped species recover. The good news is that when we understand ecosystem dynamics, we can make better decisions. Wolf reintroduction in Yellowstone, marine protected areas, and habitat restoration projects all use our knowledge of population dynamics to help ecosystems recover. The key insight is that ecosystem dynamics are usually driven by multiple factors working together. Not just one cause, but a complex web of interactions that scientists are still working to understand. Now, understanding ecosystem dynamics helps us make sense of the natural world around us. These population ups and downs that seem random are actually following predictable patterns based on resource availability, predation, disease, and environmental changes. This knowledge is more important than ever as we face environmental challenges like climate change, habitat loss, and species extinctions. Who knows, maybe you'll become an ecologist tracking wildlife populations, or a conservation biologist designing protected areas, or a policymaker using population data to make important decisions for all of us. Now, don't forget to subscribe for more amazing science videos, and let us know down in the comments, have you noticed any population changes in animals around your home? Thanks for exploring ecosystem dynamics with Seismic. Want to explore more about ecosystems, population ecology, and environmental science? Check out our complete middle school science curriculum at seismic.com, where every student can learn, grow, and achieve.